Welcome to our greenhouse here in North Yorkshire. Uh, quite nice, isn't it? Well, I think so anyway. One of the problems with uh, greenhouse, if you want to keep it warm in the winter, is the cost of electricity or other means of heating it. But there seems to be quite a good solution with these Chinese diesel heaters. I've got one, you can see it just over there. And um, you can buy them on eBay, uh, Amazon, and various other outlets. They're around about £70, depends on uh, shopping around. They come with loads of accessories, the, a remote control, and also different pipes so you can adjust where you want the airflow to go. And I got a, an extra length of exhaust pipe because I thought, well, I can run the exhaust pipe around the bottom of the greenhouse so there's a little bit more heat generated from that because it does get quite hot, does the exhaust pipe. The only real problem with them is that they don't have a proper thermostat. They do have an inbuilt thermostat and what that does is it slows down the pump and drops its heat output to the minimum that it will produce. But even the minimum heat output from these heaters is a lot. Too much for this greenhouse, it would overheat in no time. And to make a remote control using the actual control unit, which is this, this bit here, I think you can quite see it. I'll, I'll show a photograph of it later. It, it has a press button, you just press it once and it switches it on. But to turn the heater off, you have to hold the button in for a few seconds. Now, trying to get a remote control circuit that would do that, I couldn't really figure anything out that was easy enough to manufacture. I mentioned it has a Bluetooth remote control that comes with it in the box, which is an ideal way of controlling it. Then you could just use some sort of thermostat that shorts out the on button when the temperature is too cold and then shorts out the off button when it's reached the desired temperature. There is a Canadian chap who sells them on the internet. I think they're about 70 or 80 pounds plus VAT, which is a good solution as long as you don't mind spending 70 or 80 pounds and waiting a week or two for it to come through from Canada. So I thought, well, there must be another way of doing this with the remote control. I took the Bluetooth remote apart and I did a bit of looking at logic circuits and things that you can buy. I bought this remote control here, which is uh, STC 1000. It's available from Amazon for £10. There's a 240 volt one or a 12 volt one. Then the logic boards, which are just at the back of here on a bit of Vera board. I'll show you some photos. They're about £7 each. You'd, you need a couple of these monostable boards to enable you to short out the push buttons for on and off. I've got my board set to produce a 500 millisecond pulse, which seems to work quite well so far. I'll give you more information in the description that I've got and the circuit diagram a little bit further along in the video. So that's it basically. It works, keeps the temperature around about 10 degrees and so far the plants seem to be thriving. And we just get a little bit of sunlight during the day around about 12 o'clock as the gap between the houses and that just gives it another couple of degrees boost, unless it's a cloudy day, of course. Around about the middle to the back end of February, the sun's just a bit higher so that we get some sun in the morning and a little bit later in the day, and that gives it a boost as well. And I'm looking forward to being able to start off some of the seeds and cuttings a bit earlier in the year this year. Video, I'd like to explain how the electronics bit works. All centred around the STC 1000 thermostat that's available from Amazon for £10. I chose the 12 volt version. There's an external temperature sensor that connects to pins 3 and 4. It's included in the kit that you get. I've just put it above the shelf so it's around about halfway up the height of the greenhouse. There are two relays. There's a heat relay which energises when the temperature drops to the preset level that you've set it to and then there's the cool relay which comes in when you've reached the maximum temperature but here it's just controlling two monostables and these two monostables are two little circuit boards from Amazon which I think are six or seven pounds each. Oh, the rest is pretty much self-explanatory 12 volts goes to pin one and also via a 100 ohm resistor it goes to pins five and to pins seven of the two relays which are normally open but will close when their specific temperature point is reached which you can set very easily and there's a good YouTube video the links here as to how to do all that 
and there's links here to the information about the monostables and also a video on how to set the length of time that you want the output pulse to the last. I've got mine set to half a second. When the temperature drops, in my case, to around about 9 degrees, this relay closes, puts 12 volts on pin 2, which triggers the monostable to produce a half second pulse and closes this relay for half a second. That shorts out this button on the remote control. This is the start button, which is the same position as here. That's the stop button, which is the same position as there. And if you're looking at the buttons on here, so uh, this bit of circuit board here and here and here, if you get a magnifying glass out and have a close look at the board, you'll see that they're all joined. I also checked them with my multimeter. So that's the ground, the common ground for the buttons. And then this is the hot side of the buttons. Shorting that out energizes that button uh, uh, and its function. So that's basically how it works. It draws quite a bit of current when it first comes on, does the heater, because the glow plug, which uh, heats up the combustion chamber, takes about five or six amps, I think, just initially until it gets up to temperature. Once it reaches its internal temperature suitable for continuous combustion of the diesel, the glow plug switches off. And it's important that you have a good power supply to the heater. Where we live, it's quite rural and we often get power cuts. So in that situation, I thought it was a good idea to use a 12 volt of the leisure battery, which I had given from one of my sons who used it for, I think two or three years in his camper over winter. It's still going well and doesn't seem to show any signs of age as yet. Uh, oh, going back to the switch off circuitry, the heat relay, after about a one degree rise in temperature, it actually opens just that relay. And then when the temperature gets to the desired level, around about 11 and a half degrees, this relay closes, which then sends 12 volts to the input of the cool monostable, which does the same thing as the heat monostable. It produces a half second pulse, closing that relay and shorting out this button and initiating the cool down process. The fuel's cut off and the fan keeps blowing until the temperature of the combustion chamber reaches a safe level before the power is completely switched off. I have some photos of the whole setup which are coming next. This is the whole circuit. It's not in a case, it's on my list of to-dos and uh, possibly, like a lot of us, we all have a to-do list and mine seems to grow. I do get through some of them and I try to keep on top of it, but now it's working. I keep thinking if I put it in a box, it might stop working. I know it's silly, but uh, it's just how you are, isn't it? Anyway, that's the module, the thermostat module here. And when I took this photograph, it was 13.5 degrees in the greenhouse. That cable there, I think, is the one that goes up to the temperature sensor module. I've got another photograph coming up. This is showing the two monostable modules mounted on some Vera board. I actually used a sticky pad, a double-sided sticky pad to mount them. And uh, also the Bluetooth remote control for the heater. I'm actually still using the battery on that, although in the circuit I've showed it has been powered off the 12 volts. It's just something I haven't got around to doing as yet, that's another one on the to-do list. This little bit here of circuitry, it's just a, I think it's a 10 ohm resistor and a couple of capacitors, just as a little bit of a line filter for the power to the board. Um, as you can see there, it's not quite that clear. That's the start button and that's the red wire coming from the relay output that uh, shorts out the button and initiates the startup sequence of the heater. Uh, this other red wire is the cool on a stable and that's going to the other button which initiates the shutdown sequence. There's a series of uh, buttons here which are all explained in the YouTube video which enable you to set various parameters for the monostable. It's all optically isolated. They're an excellent uh, piece of equipment and when you consider how cheap they are it's just amazing really. Um, you do get a Bluetooth remote with the heater. I had an 
old heater that was given to me by the same son who gave me the leisure battery. Uh, it had played up with him in his van, he'd been using it quite a while and I managed to keep it going for a little while but it, it kept failing to start and would produce loads of smoke even though I cleaned everything inside, put a new glow plug in so in the end I thought I'm going to buy another heater. They are so good and they produce so much heat and they're really quite frugal, they don't use a lot of diesel considering how much heat you get out of them. This is the control panel for the heater and uh, that's the button that you would normally use to start it if you weren't using the remote control. You press it once to start and then it's a long press to close it down which is why it makes it awkward to try and come up with some sort of remote system to switch the heater on and off. As, and as I explained earlier the heater does have its own inbuilt thermostat but it doesn't turn it off, it just turns the heater down to a low power mode and it still chucks out loads of heat. So the only way really is to switch it off completely. I, up above here is just a voltmeter connected to the battery. It was something like three pound off eBay and uh, it just means whenever I pop in the greenhouse I can just quickly look at that and see if the battery is okay. This is the battery, it's a leisure battery from Halford, it's probably at least four years old now and it's still going strong. That's the heater itself with its battery charger, it's just a small charger, it's one of these intelligent chargers, it only gives out 800 milliamps but it monitors the battery voltage and it claims that it will remove any sulfate from the battery, keep it healthy and if it doesn't need any charge it doesn't charge it so there you go that's what it claims and it so far seems to be working that way. This is the diesel tank, uh, there's a little dot there which about four weeks ago I put five litres of diesel into this tank and that's how much it's used in four weeks which is pretty amazing really isn't it? Oh that's by the way is the spare key fob which is handy because you can pair more than one Bluetooth key fob to the unit so I paired the one that I'd stripped down and this one already came paired with the heater and if I'm in the greenhouse and I just want it to be a little bit more human comfort warmth I can just pop the heater on for a few minutes and then knock it off when I think I'm warm enough. So all in all it uh, seems to be a pretty good system so far. Well that's the end of this video. Hopefully I've covered enough points for you to replicate this system if you'd like to keep your greenhouse nice and toasty throughout winter with one of those diesel heaters. And if you found it useful, please give me a like. Thank you.